All right, lads, welcome back to another Dauntless video. Today's video will focus on making sure you get those pesky tail drops of Erska, but also get a couple of paws, and if you are missing the face as well, basically just destroying Erska's pieces to bits. Um, I've seen a couple of builds online, but I thought I'd address this situation myself. There's a couple of things I wanted to put into mind while I was making this build. That was, can I get through the escalation fast, as well as well as breaking the pieces of Erska. I didn't want you to have a hard time getting through the escalation and then being able to break Erska really quickly. I wanted you to be able to get a nice balance of doing the whole escalation nice, cleanly, but also being able to destroy the parts as well. Yes, this build probably isn't optimized just for breaking the parts, but like I said, it's to make to meet both of these criterias. Today, I've got two builds for you. One of them being a chain blades and sword build. It can be intertwined into whatever weapon out of those two you'd like. The other one being an old favorite of the old Mulcarian's one-shot build that works really nicely on the tail, definitely, and any piece you want to break of Erska with that axe build. But first things first, if you are new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. We upload two to three times of Dauntless content every single week. If you like content like this, definitely leave the video a like as well. It does motivate me to do more videos on this specific topic in the future. Also, if you haven't added someone's epic creator code in the store within Dauntless, either put mine in or someone else's. I'm sure if you're not choosing me, I'm sure whoever you choose will be more than glad you've added their code into the store. But without further ado, let's get into the build. Because there is a slight change when you're looking at the sword and the chain blades build. It's a it's very similar, but it's a little little change. So look at the sword first. We've got the Tordogoro sword with overpower and overpower again. Valiant overdrive, recursive heal, and then make sure you bond the Ember's main bond to get that sick fit in the row to deal 250% part damage. This is really, really nice because it gives you evasive fury plus three. Because we're running a full life build, there's no world frenzy going to be active because you're not running half life. So evasive fury actually works really, really nice in getting that attack speed you miss from wild frenzy. Then we've got the Stormclaw's head with cunning, Karabak's chest with berserker, Drask's arms with conduit, Frax legs with berserker, and Ember's main lantern with conduit. I wouldn't recommend running Pangars because it does too much damage. You can run Drask if you wish, but I think the best choice to break parts is Ember's main lantern, just so you get more attack speed and not have too much damage. Then we've got Detonics, Blitz for attack speed, Bulwark to get you through the escalation if you need it, and then the Cleansing Pylon to make sure you don't freeze throughout the escalation. The perk summary looks a bit like this, plus six of Berserker, Conduit, Cunning, Overpower, leaving a plus three of Bladestorm, Energized, Evasive Fury, and Sharpened. As you can see, it is a full life build, as I already mentioned, so there's no Rage, no Discipline. Trust me, it works really, really nice, because we've got the Zerker anyway for more damage. The Cunning works really, really nice with the Avatar of Destruction as well. And then we've got nice overpowered states for when you do break Behemoth's parts consistently, which goes well with the Bladestorm and the Sharpened. Yes, there's no plus six Sharpened or no plus six Bladestorm. I didn't want you guys to have to worry about dodging to get that extra 400% damage here and there. So I got you a nice overall increase of 30% paired up between the Bladestorm and Sharpened for part damage. That paired up with the Ember's main cut list of the sixth hit in a row of 250, you can be dealing up to 280% um, extra part damage um, every six hits, I believe. Yep, six hits. So it is a real nice damage part break build. Um, I'm gonna explain to you a couple of things in just a moment. If you are running chain blades, it's the exact same thing. You just put the Tordogoros in, overpower here, overpower again, with the Ember's Blades for the Evasive Fury, obviously. But obviously there's Energized. If you do wanna change this, if you want to change this, it's up to you. You can then put either a Conduit in and then you can change one of your cells to Catalyst. That'll give you plus three Catalyst and a plus six Conduit and no Energize. That's totally up to you. That also works really, really nicely. But if you want, if you like the extra boost for your um, special meter, keep the Energized on. Also, if you're running Chain Blades, you can change the um, Serrated Blades to Momentum Blades if you'd like to have more specials as well. It's definitely your choice, but I personally like this particular loadout. Um, but yeah, I'm now going to explain to you as well the Axe build. 
I'm not actually going to show you the whole breakdown of the build. It is here if you want to see it, but I'm also going to leave a link up here to my top five builds within Dauntless of 2020. That build will be in that list. I'm pretty sure it's either build four or five. Go check the video out. It will show you the whole breakdown of this build. It just saves me explaining the same build twice. But I'm now going to show you and put you through to and a couple of Erska runs just to explain how this build works and how you can break the pieces with ease. Starting off with the sword, I recommend positioning yourself behind him so you can get a nice free Valor hold down light combo called the Blade Surge on his tail straight away as the fight starts, providing you have free Valor. Every time he goes onto the icicles, you want to position yourself just near him to the right of the icicle because he will always land here 99% of the time. You want to be focusing on the light combos and consistently using the blade rush. That is the hold down light combo for your sword. The heavy combo doesn't seem to work as well because the hitbox of Erska is kind of scuff. I don't know why. So I just recommend sticking to these two combos. After you've generated enough special meter, you'll be able to go into Valiant Overdrive. This is key in making sure you can position yourself. Uh, to Erska's tail with the cost of one Valor you can just dash towards behind him. This can be done as much as possible as long as you have your Valiant Overdrive active. You also get a nice attack buff damage as well so this will lead to the tail breaking a lot easier as well. I've broken a tail loads of times with the sword and it does roughly come around half health like so. Providing you have done the majority of the damage on the tail and not the rest of the Erska, the key component is making sure you are concentrating most of your damage on the tail just in case you do somehow kill it quickly. But because most of the damage with this build is part damage, this shouldn't be a problem and you should be able to get the tail even if it is right at the end. Moving on to the chain blades, the same principles apply. You want to start behind the Erska and then lead with your traditional combo of the light, light, heavy, light to deal the most damage on the tail. Also, you want to be making sure you're taking full advantage of the Reaper stance to go into the sky and then landing the light attack to gain your stacks for your slam down Reaper stance attack. As you can see from this clip, the light attack from the Reaper stance in the sky can do a nice juicy crit. I have done up to 7k crits just with this attack, so just make sure you are trying to position your attacks on the tail as much as possible. When you do get a 10 stacks for your Reaper's Dance, if you do successfully hit it with the slam down attack, you can hit a nice fat crit and that will pretty much be the majority of the health of the tail of the Erska. Just another side note of the tail, when you have broke it, it doesn't always make itself clear that you've broken it but as you can just saw from that clip previously you can see that there's now white damage coming from the tail if you didn't already know one there's no yellow damage coming from the part you're trying to break and it turns to white this basically means you're now just doing core damage to the behemoth and the part is actually broken so just make sure you are checking to make sure the tail is actually in fact broken because you might have actually missed a break previously and then you might have just be able to focus the rest of your time on maybe a paw or a face depending on what you want to go for. Moving on to the axe, obviously the build's slightly different. You want to obviously position yourself behind the Erska the same as the other two builds. Throw the axe on the tail with your Drast tap as well. Obviously I've explained the build in the previous video but I do find using the axe on Erska really really jarring and annoying just because he moves too much. You don't want to be doing your traditional hold down combo on Erska. You just want to be making sure your axe throws connect with the tail and you're just jumping and doing light attacks on the tail. This will eventually break the Erska's tail and it probably only takes two to four throws with this build. Plus, I don't think the axe needs to be fully charged throw every single time. I've thrown the, this axe twice already on the tail and it's almost broken. I land the third throw coming up now and that will eventually break the tail. As you can see, there's the tail break. It is really, really simple to break the tail with the axe 
and with a lot of health to spare. If you do just want a simple way of destroying the parts and you like using axe, this is a really, really nice build. But obviously I thought I'd give you the other two variants for the chain blades and the sword as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you guys in the next video.